Morning guys, this is Rick. I hope you're having a great day. In today's video, we're going to be putting the uh, the craft room to uh, full use and uh, we're going to be using all sorts of machinery. We're going to be use, using the resin printers and we're going to be using the uh, spray booth uh, to create some little gifts. So we're scheduled for a camping trip uh, in a number of weeks time and I'm going to be meeting up with some uh, friends, some guys you uh, possibly know, uh, others you may not, but uh, all of these guys love their wolves so I decided to make everybody a little gift which is a, a kind of a wolf head key ring and I'm going to resin print it, uh, paint it and then finish it off and then put it in some sort of presentation box and I thought I would uh, record that entire process uh, here in this video. Now when I did my last resin printing video uh, where I introduced you to the resin printing station. Uh, I had several inquiries as to how do you actually get the files onto the resin printers in order to run them in the first place. So I'll show you that right now. So I bought myself a little program, um, an STL file. Uh, I found uh, a place online that had this particular wolf head uh, file. I've got it here and I'm going to double click it and it's going to open it uh, in something called Chitu Box. So Chitu Box is a piece of slicing software and what it does is it takes your uh, whatever it is you want to print and it turns it into slices that the printer uh, will know what to do with. So let me just scale this up so that we've got uh, a reasonable size. So there is the the thing that I want to print that's a, a, a kind of a ornate wolf head and uh, you can see it's got a little tag here so it's um, uh, can be used as a pendant or a key ring or something like that and this is what I'm going to print out now this rectangle here represents the bed of the printer and I think what I'm going to do is print several of these I'm actually going to make that a little bit smaller to make it more of a, a key ring size. I'm just doing this purely by eye, just guessing. Um, I think that probably looks about right. Yeah, I think we get one, two, yeah, we'll get three on the bed. So I'll, I'll get three of these printed. Now, before I duplicate this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it ready for printing. And what you have to do for that is to add supports. So I've just come in with a slightly better angle on the screen, so hopefully you can see what's going on here. So if I were to tip this upside down, you can see the only point of contact on the bed is these two green spots here. So that will be a failed print as it is at the moment um, because the, the, the base of this is just not flat. Now you can print it flat on the bed. I, I could take this into another piece of software, flatten the, the bottom off, but I'm not going to do that because Three of these across the bed will cause quite a lot of suction against the uh, the, the clear screen, the F, the F what's it called, the, the FEP <laughs> on the bottom um, of the vat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to tilt these so that it prints them in smaller slices. So if I click on rotate and actually tilt this up on its edge, that way it'll print smaller areas at a time and that will just generally be more efficient. So I don't really need to tilt it any more than that. So that's fine. I'm going to print it in that position and I'm just going to add supports. So if I click that button there, what it will do is it will place a raft beneath it. Um, and then if I click all, it will add all of these like little scaffolding supports and uh, that's how it will print and if I slice that you'll see if I start at the bottom it'll start off with the raft and then slowly layer at a time it'll print all the supports first and then slowly it'll start printing the actual item until it goes all the way to the top. So I think that will print just fine as it is. Uh, any of these red areas um, are kind of overhanging areas so they, you need to pay a little bit of attention to those and I can add in extra support on any of the darker red areas just to make them less likely to fail um, and I think I think we'll be okay I have printed one of these before and it did come out fine so those I think let me just make sure they're not touching together no all good 
all good, all good. Right, so those are ready for printing. So that is an actual graphic representation uh, of what will print on the bed. Now it will print upside down like so. Um, as you remember on the, um, on the resin printer, it prints everything upside down. So that will hang upside down over the vat of um, resin. So all I need to do is click slice. And when I do that, it'll have a little think about it. Then it will take those models and it will slice them into a usable G-code format, which the resin printers work with. Now, while that's slicing, um, I'll show you the way I transfer this program to the printers, I simply use one of these. I've actually got two of these little memory sticks, one for the Saturn and one for the Mars. And they've even got S and M written on them. Um, so this is gonna be printed on the Saturn. Uh, so <clears throat> it's now sliced it, and it's telling me that it's going to use a volume of 79 milliliters. Um, the finished weight of the whole project will be 87 grams. It's going to cost me about $2.39 uh, in resin, and it's going to take just under three hours. So that's great. So I'm going to plug the Saturn uh, memory stick key in, or USB stick, and uh, there's all of my programs that are already on there. Uh, so I'm just going to make a little file, so folder, and I'm just going to call this Wolf uh, Heads Key Rings. Terrible English, but I know what that means. Wolf head key rings, let's try that. Okay, and then we're gonna open that. And then if I click save, uh, it'll ask me where it wants to go. So we go USB drive, wolf head key rings, there. And I'm gonna click save. Now it does take a little while. This little bar has to fill up. It does take a little while for it to, um, to copy over, but you can see it's copying it over here now. And then once that's copied over, I can go and plug that straight into the, uh, the Saturn, the resin printer, and get that started. And I'll show you all that right now. Right then, welcome to my humble little uh, printing room. Right, I'm gonna put my little uh, protective jacket on because I don't wanna get resin spilt on me. Safety first as always, and gloves. Alexa, turn on Saturn. That should turn on now, hopefully. There we go, that's turned on. I decided to connect up the Saturn and the Mars to remote controlled plugs. Simply if I'm away and there's printing going on and there's a problem, um, I can monitor it on the camera and turn it off remotely from anywhere in the world if I need to. Not that I'm gonna be <laughs> <laughs> too far away if these things are printing anyway um, but it's just a, a safety thing um, so we're just going to use the standard where are we, ABS like photopolymer resin for these just chuck a little bit more in there shouldn't need too much of this we I think we said we only needed about was well, less than a hundred mils so there's more than that in there much more than that so it's more than enough so it's sort of almost ready to go. Let's just put the head into place. And then all we do is we put our little memory stick in the side here. Right, so if I go to print and then look for wolf head key ring, there they are. So let's click on that. And that should be it. So it's just a case of pressing play and the head's on its way down now. So there we go, that there is the first pattern. And uh, that's the, oh, there goes my door. So that's the base of the raft. Now the first few layers, it takes a long time. There's a long exposure and that makes sure that it really adheres to the, uh, to the bed. And then the subsequent layers, the actual print itself, um, they're just, uh, uh, I think it's about, it's under three seconds per layer. So there we go, I shall be back in about three hours uh, when hopefully this will have printed and then we can go on to the next step. Okay, I'm just checking in on this. Um, it's been running for a couple of hours and uh, I just come to check, make sure the print is working well. And as you can see there, um, when the head lifts up a little bit, 
uh, hopefully it'll focus and you can see the, the actual print is attached to the build plate and does seem to be working. If I zoom out a little bit, what you can see on the little screen, you see the head comes down, the little screen lights up with the next layer. I think it's 2.8 seconds, then it goes away and then the head lifts up off the FEP, which is that clear uh, sheet of like uh, polythene along the bottom of the vat and then it drops down for its next layer. And what you need to listen for is that telltale sort of little crunch sound as each layer is pulled off of the, the FEP. I'm going to put the microphone close to the uh, to the vat so you can hear it. Right then, so it's been a little over three and a half hours and uh, this is now finished. And this looks like it has worked and there are three wolf heads there. So that's the top of the print head cleaned and the rest I'm going to wash off in here. Oh, that's annoying only one of them has printed right this one's got a crack in it and this one has peeled up oh and it's got a load of oh how annoying look this is these I've got two failed prints and one one that, that's worked I'll get them off the plate and I'll show you them right hopefully you can see that um, yeah this one it looks pretty much intact but these two, for some reason, this one's got a split here. And if you look underneath, all of the support structure is missing. Um, and the same on this side, there's a load of support structure that's all missing from, from here. Uh, so I'm not entirely sure what happened there. It's all still very much a learning curve for me. But still, never mind, I can, I can salvage that one. These two, uh, not so much. Um, that's definitely not salvageable because uh, it's only half half a print and that one yeah that like you can see the structure that's completely missing it's missing all of its uh, all of its supports but we've still got one that we can work with so I'm just gonna get the supports off this one it should just be a case of pulling them off there we go perfect so there we go that's Fine. Now you can see where all the supports were, that sort of speckly, um, these little raised specks, they need to be filed off, but I can do that indoors. Um, but yeah, this other, other than that, this looks perfect. So at least we've got one that we can work with. Right, I need to cure this uh, in the ultraviolet light. So we're done with the isopropyl alcohol. Can just put that to one side for the moment. And then we just need our little turntable and uh, we'll put our little wolf on there. Change that to cure. We'll do that for 10 minutes. I'll do it 15, uh, 13, 14, yeah, 15, there we go. So we do that for 15 minutes. I'll put the lid on. Oh, just bend this top down. And there we go. So I'll come back in 15 minutes time and that will be fully cured. Right, that's now done. And that will probably be warm. Yeah, a little bit warm. That is ready to go. And uh, I can now paint that and uh, finish it off. So all we've got to do is uh, start painting. I've got my little uh, spray booth here and uh, I'm going to do it here. I've got a, uh, an airbrush. 
Uh, most of this will be done with an airbrush. Some of it will be done with a, a, just a very small brush. Um, I have, uh, since the last video, I have put a much, oh, let's turn it on, a much quieter fan in here. So I can actually have this turned on now um, and hopefully the sound of the fan won't interfere with anything. The last fan sounded like a wind tunnel, um, but it's just like a little computer fan on the back and I've swapped them over and it's working beautifully. And of course that means I can have the lights on as well so I can actually see what I'm doing. Right, let me get my paints and uh, everything set up and uh, we'll go from there. Just a couple of little tricks I'm using here. Uh, first of all, thanks to Sparky Projects uh, for the suggestion of using a silicon mat on the little uh, the, the rotating platform here. Um, I was using scrap paper, uh, but actually I think I'm going to be better off with this because these are much more easily cleanable. Um, also, for any uh, paints, uh, if I'm going to paint them by hand, what I'm using here is just a, a little plate with a piece of just regular printer paper uh, that's cut out in a circle and then just dampened. Where we go? Um, where are we? There we go. Um, and this, if you drop any paint onto here, it will stop the paint from drying out. Um, because otherwise, if you just drop them straight onto a, a dry surface, they dry out really, really quickly. Um, so that's just another little trick that I've uh, picked up along the way. So I've just got two little tubs of water, uh, one of which I'll use to uh, clean the airbrush and uh, uh, the regular brushes in, and then I'll try to keep one of them clean, so I've got a clean source of uh, water as well. Now, for the wolf, I'm going to be giving it a complete uh, darker coat of a, a dark gray. Then I'm gonna be putting in some black highlights. I'm gonna be using this picture here, which I found on the internet as a general guide. It's not the same wolf, but uh, I'm gonna to try to emulate the same pattern. So we're gonna go for the, uh, the gray around the, the top of the head, the black on the head and in the ears, and obviously on the nose and mouth, and then going whiter uh, gradually as it gets down towards the bottom. So that's what I'm aiming for. Quite whether it will turn out like that, we'll, uh, we'll have to wait and see. Right, hopefully I'm gonna be able to spray this without getting in the way of the camera. Um, so I'm just gonna coat all of this. Just make sure that's coming out, yeah. Yeah, that's working fine. So I'll get a nice even coat and then I'm gonna go in certain areas to make it a little bit darker. So that was nice and simple, got a nice even coating. And I don't think, no, that's, that's actually the color of the paint. So I don't think anything is gonna go any darker. So what I need now is some black highlights. I'm gonna have a go and see whether I can just mix some black into that gray in the actual airbrush hopper itself. So let's put a few drops of black in there. Um, there we go. Gonna need a little bit of thinner. Again, still using thinner. Um, I could use water, I think, but I'm just gonna stick with the thinner because it's worked for me so far. Just gonna add a little stir. Okay, that looks good. That's very dark. What I'm aiming to do is uh, just put some of the darker highlights in. So that's around the ears, around the edges of the ears, uh, and around the sides here, and obviously on the head there. Um, I'll probably paint the black nose with a brush uh, later on, but I might just put a spot on there. Uh, we'll see. So let's have a go. Got to be a little bit careful the amount of paint I'm going on. But yeah, there we go, Look, you can see it's going darker there. I'm gonna go around the edges of the ears. And around the sides. do for that. Uh, I'll see if I can save some of this grey. 
I uh, might need that a bit later on, we'll see. And I've just got to clean the brush out now and then we're going to switch over to the white. Um, right, so that looks nice and dry. Uh, so let's go on to the white paint. Let me, let me put that coffee out of the way. And we'll go on to the, the white. And I'm, I'm not going to mix this. I'm just literally going to pop it into the hopper, add a little bit of thinner and just go from there. Give it a little mix, it might be a little bit watery, we'll see how we get on with that. No, it could be okay. So the plan is to try to emulate the, uh, the lighter areas, so sort of around the tops of the eyes, the, uh, the nose and underneath, and some bits in the ears, without completely whiting out the areas that I've coloured dark. Push it any more than that. I think we've got something. We've got something handy there. Um, it'll all come to life when I when I paint the eyes. The eyes make all the difference. But I think we've sort of roughly got the the kind of pattern I'm going to go for. So now it's time to switch over to a brush. Right then. So I've got my little reference picture off to the side here, and. Um, I just need to really paint the eyes. So I've got the tiniest little brush I can get, uh, which is that one, that's the smallest brush. And I'm just debating whether I need to go in there. I do need to go in there with some black. So I've got my little plate uh, with the wet piece of paper on it. And I'm just gonna drop a couple of pieces of the black, a couple of pieces, a couple of drops of the black paint uh, on there and that'll be plenty to work from. And like I say, because the paper's wet, um, it's not gonna dry out. So I'm just gonna get a little bit on the brush and we'll go for the eyes. Now I've taped the, the silicon mat down and that's my target area. So I know uh, hopefully it's all in focus when you see it. I need more light. I've got my light on, um, but I need, right, I'm gonna need to put my, I need to put these on. These, these are my um, uh, magnifying glasses. These are great, so I can get up, up really up close. That's much better. Um, so I'm going to need to just paint in the around the eye, uh, according to the picture. The whole surround is black. So I need to keep my hand on the table to keep it steady. Hopefully you're seeing this and my head's not getting in the way. Um, but the surround of the eye is just black. There we go. And that goes right up to the iris. So let's just pop that there and there. The impression of the eye is sort of marked out so I can work with it. Um, I'm sure there's a name for it where it's like a raised area that represents the the iris and the um, the actual eyeball. Oop. But this is actually really, really quite relaxing to do. Um, if I sit here and put my favourite music on and just chill out and get into this, and it's really. Sorry, I just noticed my microphone is banging on the table. Let me just take the microphone off. Right, I've just put my microphone on the table here, so hopefully that'll stop it knocking against the table. So right, okay, so we've got the black surround around the eye pretty much done, I think. Hopefully you can see that I can't see, I've got my uh, glasses on. Right, okay, I need to be more in the middle. There we go. Um, so just give that a moment to dry and we'll do the next step. Now in this picture, the eyes are kind of a golden green colour. So 
So I'll see if I've got a, I've got all my paints together in a, in a box here. Um, so I'm going to see if I can pick out the right colour. I've got this, which is polished gold. I think I'm going to, I'm going to have a go with this gold, this polished gold. May even put a drop of green in it, just to see whether I can get that same effect. So let's have a go. So um, just move that there. So I'm going to drop a couple of drops of this gold here. And let's bring in, bring in um, I've got something called Goblin Green. Let's just see what that looks like. I wonder if a tiny little drop of that green goes in with the gold, whether that will give me the colour I want. Because this is an iris, I could not mix it very well, so I've got a little bit of swirliness going on there. Um, now, I may, rather than put that on with a brush, I might actually put it on with the back end of a brush, because I, I hopefully I might even be able to get a circular dab rather than a brush on. Let's have a go. Can I get my magnifying glass on again? So, let's try it. It's a little runny. Maybe okay. Um, I've yet to draw the pupil on. Definitely got more control using the the butt end of a paintbrush rather than an actual brush. I think uh, whether that's the right colour or not, I'm not sure. But the eyes look about right. He doesn't look boss-eyed or anything. There we go. Right, I'm gonna let that dry, and then we'll see if we can pop the irises on, and then uh, see what that looks like. Right, so I've just spotted on a couple of pupils. Right then, so now I just need to add some highlights. So I'm gonna use a little spot of white. Uh, that's the paint I'm using there, um, which is just basic uh, Valero uh, model white. And for the little white highlights, I'm actually going to use a scalpel because it just needs to be the tiniest, tiniest little spot. And so let's just dip the tip of the scalpel into the white and then I'm just going to put a little tiny dab of white on the, the right side of the pupil. So straight away with those two tiny little dots of white you've got, where are you, there you go, uh, it brings the eye to life and then finally uh, now, now, I have been experimenting with adding clear resin to the eyes, but it's too much. Um, but what I am going to use is uh, some of this, which is uh, X22 Clear Gloss Varnish. Where are we? Oh, sorry, uh, half of this isn't showing up on the camera. There we go. Um, so uh, I'm going to just put a tiny little spot of varnish on the eyes and that will bring them to life. Uh, and then hopefully... Uh, this thing will be finished. Right, tiny little spot of varnish and just on the eyeball. Literally the, the pupil and the iris and that's it. So there we go. I think I can quite happily call that finished. See the little shiny bits in the eyes. Um, that looks pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. So all I've got to do now is sort out a little presentation box and I think we're done. Now for a presentation box I'm just going to uh, cut one out on the Cricut machine and uh, assemble it, uh, maybe a little bit of um, crepe paper or something to present it in. Um, but uh, there's actually a cutout box that I've saved uh, here. It's just a standard project that's available on the, uh, the Cricut design space. Now I think for the, the style of the box or the pattern on the box, I'm gonna be using a wolf fur pattern. Uh, this is a, a picture of some wolf fur that I found on the internet. 
and uh, I've just loaded it up into Photoshop. So what I'm going to do is print that out on a, car, a, a sheet of A3 card uh, and then I can cut out the box from there. So there we go, one sheet of A3 uh, 300 GSM card with a, a Wolf fur print. And obviously I'm gonna now use uh, the Cricut machine to uh, cut out the, uh, the box, which I can then assemble from there. So this is the, uh, the box program. Uh, you've basically got two sides with uh, scored lines and uh, I need those two and I need a lid. I don't need these two lids, so I can get rid of those for now. And I need a couple of um, liners but I've already got some of those printed out so I'll delete those as well uh, so I don't need those uh, so it's literally the sides and the uh, the lid so if I click make it hopefully uh, if I tell it I'm going to be cutting it out on a sheet of a3 there we go so oh all right I might need an extra piece of card uh, with the wolf skin on it, uh, which I'll print out. Um, but yeah, it, it'll cut out the box on the, uh, the wolf skin print and uh, we should be good to go. Right, so there we have the, uh, the lid finally glued. And we'll just stick another one of these little bits of card in there. It just doubles up the thickness of the card and makes it a little bit stronger. Uh, so, we'll just do a test fit, make sure it fits. Perfect, there we go, one little gift box. Now, I haven't got any tissue paper or anything, so I've managed to dig out a little bit of crepe paper. So what I'm going to do is just chop that in half. And again, a little bit of this paper. I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm just going to sort of give it a nice bed to sit on. Okay. Then we can take our painted wolf, pop it in there. And then another bit of tissue paper over the top. And there we go, pop the lid on there. Oh, I think these lids are very slightly rectangular, they only fit one way. Now, how do I hold that together? Um, I don't want a big girly bow or anything. This is going to a guy. So I think what I've got is a piece of a piece of leather and I'll just tie it up with a piece of leather. Um, and I think that will be job done. Um, that's not gonna go long enough to go all the way around. So I'm just gonna have to tie it as it is. And I'm <laughs> rubbish at knots. Uh, but, there we go. Just tuck that in there or something. <laughs> Not quite sure. I could I could just have two loose ends like that, maybe. Um, don't know. Uh, okay, well, let's let's call that let's call that job done. So there we go, another fun little project uh, for a gift that started out life as a puddle of goo and became a thing. 
Um, so it's made completely from scratch. That'll make a nice gift for somebody. And um, it's, it's just kind of nice and quite satisfying to know that you've created something for somebody that's, uh, that's literally uh, from, made something out of nothing. You've started from scratch uh, and you've actually got a, a presentable thing at the end. So I actually need three of these and obviously I've only made the one so far, um, but I will uh, go off and do some more at my leisure. So there we go. That's it from me. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of the day and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care.